Okay, let's go to New Delhi now and speak to Aftab Kamal Pasha, who is a professor of Middle East Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Um, welcome to you, uh, Aftab. We heard it in that report there, the claim that several moderate and reform candidates reportedly barred from running in the election. Um, if that is the case, why did it happen? And does it cast any cloud over results that will come? The elections uh, for the assembly of experts uh, to choose the supreme leader uh, is extremely important uh, and significant uh, for two reasons. One is uh, the present uh, supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, uh, is reported to be not in very good shape. His health is a matter of concern. And uh, you know, if anything happens, he would like to have a person uh, in place uh, who would succeed him and follow his uh, policies, uh, which have guided the Islamic Republic uh, and the uh, mullahs and the ayatollahs uh, who are in uh, control, especially the very influential uh, clergy party, the Assembly of Combatant uh, uh, Clergy. So uh, what uh, Ali Khamenei has been pursuing, uh, both in domestic and foreign policy, you know, uh, that has uh, been subject uh, for uh, a lot of uh, review and uh, criticism, especially in the background of 2022 death of uh, uh, Mahisi Amini, uh, which led to several deaths and uh, over 20,000 uh, people being arrested. Uh, this is significant. Uh, because there's a lot of turmoil and protest and boycotts which followed this uh, for the last two years and the economic sanctions which are fighting the Iranian people. So their expectations on the economic and political and security fronts uh, are quite high. Given the uh, added to this, the regional turmoil, because Iran's allies from uh, Hamas to Hezbollah to uh, the Houthis and uh, their uh, supporters in Iraq, they are under tremendous pressure because the Israelis uh, uh, seeing the going top in Gaza, they would like to attack uh, soon uh, Hezbollah and decimate uh, their capability to threaten the northern part of Israel. So given uh, all of these domestic, regional, and uh, global pressures uh, from the United States uh, also, you know, this uh, assembly of experts uh, to elect the Supreme Leader becomes extremely important. Even though the enthusiasm among the people, uh, among the 61 million eligible voters is less because uh, compared to last time in 2019, where, or where the voter turnout was 42%, it is not expected to cross uh, that uh, because of the waning uh, enthusiasm of the Iranian uh, people. The other main feature of this election is uh, there are over 15,200 the candidates uh, and uh, for the first time, 1,713 women candidates uh, are contesting, which is the highest, which goes to show the increasing assertiveness and interest of the women members to contest the 290 members of the Iranian uh, Majlis. Uh, so both the economic and political, domestic, regional and global factors uh, are focusing the attention on Iranian election, and they are very significant and uh, the voting uh, is underway, and results, final results will not come uh, at least for three days, but initial early results uh, may come uh, as early as tonight or uh, tomorrow morning. So it is interesting that... Uh, Aftab, I, I the... apologise for interrupting you, just because I want to go back to something you mentioned. You talked about the, the death of Masa Amini. Um, it was September of 2022. Um, it, it created nationwide protests. People are out on the streets. Um, she was accused of violating Iran's Islamic dress code. And um, amongst the people protesting, were, there were lots of women, women cutting their hair. It, as much as anything else, the, the protests were about the way that women are treated. And you said that there is like record numbers of, of women standing for positions in these elections. Do you think the anger that we saw uh, a year and a half ago could manifest itself in the voting at the ballot box? <laughs> You see, the Iranian nation is polarized. Uh, uh, half of the women folk uh, are uh, dissatisfied with the strict uh, hijab code enforced by the moral policing. Uh, but the other half uh, are solidly behind the polema, the clergy. So this polarized nation uh, is voting 
and uh, the uh, women uh, who have been protesting, uh, liberal uh, women who have been protesting, they have not been able to sway and convince the conservative women. That is how they have, the conservative women have uh, filed in large numbers uh, to contest the election. So the uh, troublemakers uh, appear to be largely isolated and sidelined. Uh, and uh, the systematic uh, media campaign also has impacted them. And uh, they have uh, not been also some of them allowed to contest. So in that way, it is the uh, hardline faction, the uh, Revolutionary Guards, the Basij, Basij militia, and the other factors close to the establishment they have a decided advantage in contesting. So the uh, protests uh, uh, and boycotts over the Mahisi Amini have faded from people's memory. And it is uh, the regional situation, the economic sanctions, and the, the struggle for uh, survival, which is uppermost in the minds, uh, and also the security factor, which is impacting the elections. It's usually you have to have money in the pocket that decides where people vote, ultimately. Um, if you had to pick one thing, what's the number one thing that will decide where people vote? What, what's the one change they want to see? The economic situation. You see, over the years, uh, the economic situation has been rapidly deteriorating. And the promises made uh, by Ibrahim Raisi and uh, the earlier president and parliaments uh, have not reached the the common man, because of the sanctions on oil and uh, the crippling uh, other restrictions by the Western countries, you know, Iran has not been able to trade uh, with the rest of the world. With the result, the foreign exchange available for economic development uh, and uh, percolating it to the common people, you know, that is affecting. And the economic development since it has stalled, it is affecting the, the middle class, lower middle class, rural people. Uh, the economic pinch is really, really hard. People fi don't find enough medicine for cancer or basic uh, drugs. Uh, and, uh, you know, the survival is a daily, daily struggle for people. So the economic issues uh, are uh, paramount as far as uh, their interests are concerned. And they are going to vote uh, yeah, in a decisive way, to hoping to, for a change in their economic fortune. Aftab, appreciate you coming on. Good to speak to you. Aftab Kamal Pasha is my guest, Professor of Middle East Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University.